Yeah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm Greg. Hi, Greg. Hi, Greg. Thank you. I've been puttering away at this little application for seven or eight or nine years now. I don't know. It's. I've been. I feel like a caveman off in the corner, pulling what I can. Not connecting. I don't know why. I sort of know why, but not connecting. And. I'm going to tell you the story of the last nine years and the next half an hour. Um, the idea here is um, well, I'll, I'll let the, the slides will talk to it. In, in general, what we're going to look at is a little bit of background, a little introduction. I'll talk about the application itself. What is this um, um, voice tickets thing? Some assumptions I had along the way ideas about a business plan. Um, I mean, this is kind of like an application at work. How do you, what was one way of trying and succeeding or not with this thing? Where can it go? Uh, what were a few programming issues? Some other decisions I had to make. What were some highs about this whole endeavor? What were lows? And for someone who just wants to do it in Perl, what are the issues that you have to overcome if you're coming kind of from outside. I, I consider you all insiders. You all are a community. You've made Pearl this fabulous thing that I can use. I appreciate it. I, I really do. And just this story of, of how I've been pulling from using the community with ideas that, boy, this is a killer app. It's going to go great. I can't wait to give 100000 to you know, the Pearl thing. I can't wait to give my own MacArthur grant to Larry Wall. I mean, that's where I can go based on Pearl. So this is the story. We start with uh, some background. Um, I uh, studied industrial engineering, went to work for IBM in Endicott, New York. Um, two years into that, in 86, they figured out, oh, you know, we have too much manufacturing. And that was kind of you know, in the early ages of let's hollow out manufacturing and do things elsewhere. They said, where do you want to go? I said, well, I'll do marketing in Florida. And so I wound up in Tampa, worked with AIX, um, uh, was in what they call the customer center where we did things with clients. Um, I started teaching some courses and that was very interesting. Uh, I was teaching AIX sysadmin, Linux sysadmin, um, I left IBM in 94 when they said, well, hmm, we don't need five guys like you, we only need two, and you're not one of the two. So they gave you some money and they sent you off. And if I'd been smart today, I would have gotten a regular job. But no, I had this money, I had this idea and passion that, um, that speech recognition, which I'd seen on the RISC System 6000, because it wasn't yet on the PCs. You needed a lot of processing power back in the early 90s to do speech recognition. Wow, it's coming along with PCs. I knew people were going to need help. Man, there's a big business in helping people use speech recognition in the mid-90s when you had to speak like this in discrete speech. But little did I know, because I'm Mr. Techno lover, um, teaching... Uh, Classes was really subsidized the rest of my business endeavors. Um, another instructor I knew had his own little teaching business. He said, well, I need an instructor. I've got a couple of languages. Um, Java or Perl? Pick one. It was like flip a coin. What did I know? Oh, I'll do Perl. <laughs> so that set me on learning this fabulous language. And I'll just uh, mention other kind of ideas of this um, of this uh, predecessor to the application I'm building to. Um, on our website, we've got the old about page. Is it going to come up? Where uh, in, in, in trying to make money at speech recognition, uh, we talk to doctors and detectives, because they're out in the field, they're doing their notes, um, a whole variety of people trying to get them to use it, and it seemed to me that the most productive interface for somebody was not all the fancy farting around that took a lot of learning, but just being able to talk to a recorder and see your words appear. Now, I'm really irritated. Why isn't that uh, little link firing up? Maybe it is. Full screen mode. 
You think because I'm in full screen mode? Yeah, I'd probably go to the browser and it's loaded. Uh, all right. Um, uh, alt tab your way. Maybe. Yeah, just alt tab over there. Alt tab. And then click on the Firefox. Yeah, and there you go. Kumsa. Ah, all right. So, you know, there's this long story of even building up to ultimately the application that I'm going to talk about um, on our site. A little more overview. This talk is not about an application like uh, everything. You know, uh, Chromatic recently had a little posting. Um, before that, he had a posting about uh, um, was it Jesse doing the web GUI, where he's got a fago scheme coming along. And when you look down at, uh, uh, you know, Jesse knows what the hell he's doing. He's, he's, it's real. This is not that kind of an application. It's a wonderful application. I'm very proud of it. But again, as I said, this is the story of trying to make something out of Perl, dinking around on the outsides, pulling together what I can. Now, how come? Uh, Earlier this week, I'd happened to see uh, Charlie Rose. It was a late night. And uh, he had um, Jack Dorsey of Twitter on. Um, at, the, at the end of his show, you know, he's saying 200 million users. Man, this is great. They've got this advertising. They've got this cool, it's not PayPal, but they've got Square, a way to get paid through some device. It like bypasses normal stuff. Um, but he's concluding, what's the opportunity? And, and Mr. Dorsey is saying, the future is all ahead of us. I mean, yeah, there's this information, but how do we organize it? That's, that's the opportunity. So I start looking around for, um, uh, you know, what's happening with Twitter? Is it something that I can use? Because it sounds like he's speaking my language. So you noodle around and you find, okay, well, here's the list of interesting recent <laughs> posts. Why did the programmer quit his job? <laughs> he didn't get a raise. Um, we have... <laughs> uh, another post is um, you know, somebody who very wisely says, Hey, Brick, the biggest mistake you can make is trying to do everything by yourself. Oh, but I know what I'm doing! I can just like a pearl. Well, there's, there's advice if you listen to it. It's just... Sometimes it's hard to listen to what you don't really want to hear. Um, so what is this application? Um, I want to... Uh, well, let's see if it really doesn't know. Um, if you don't mind, I'd like to bend your ear for three minutes while I play you a slideshow from our website, because it gives you an overview of what this um, thing is about. We're 107. I'm the president of our company and thought that it would be a useful tool in doing our punch out and turnover of buildings in a timely manner. They print out, you know, clear, very easy to understand. That's where we got our start. Install decorative fixture and kitchen, crowd corner of tile and kitchen pantry. Trim out under kitchen sink by plumbing pipes and electrical outlet. Fill nail holes on all cabinet blowers where filler has been made. I wish I would have had this product, uh, you know, when Hurricane Charlie came through here. I just keep thinking back at that hurricane and the damage it did and how easy it would have been using BuilderWorks. I um, fix tile around water heater. With BuilderWorks, it generally takes four to five hours to walk. Um, we then circulate it through our subcontractors, and generally within one or two business days, the work is complete, and that's a finished product. It's no going back for a second or a third rewalk. It's then presentable to management. Straighten window sill on center nook window. Other works allows you to put it in two different forms. One is 
by location and for the, the vendor or subcontractor, we clump those up into a vendor location. So they just go down there 50 or 60 items, whatever it may be. And they don't have to search around for specific items or issues that we have. And it is very clear, cut, dry, easy to read, easy to understand, and you get results from it. Installed decorative fixture in the kitchen. People initially joked around, thought I was a Backstreet Boy member or band member, but um, they know I mean business when I'm out there recording, and they're wonderful to work with now. They appreciate the clarity of the, the product, and they love it. Clean up sloppy grout in corners of shower, master bath, grout inside closet, master bathroom. You get my recorder out, my headset, and then basically just just hit the building and start walking it. Generally, it's a four or five hour process to do you know, anywhere from 12 to 24 units. You're doing production work at a production price. I think we're actually getting a custom product now using the same trades. Repair severely damaged window frame on window by French door in what you room. Whatever we pay for a product, we probably save in for first three buildings. So everything now is a plus. But just in labor, time and labor, and not only is our company very happy with it, our subcontractors are happy with it. Um, they can come out and do a punch list one time instead of making three or four trips out here. So it's saving everybody money. I have a product on the street in two hours. My wife loves it. I'm home. 5.30 every evening, so it's working out fantastic. So that's Tim Huck, and, and um, he actually, what you heard was the sound quality into a digital recorder. He himself ran it through Dragon. Dragon wrote down what he said, and then I'm going to kind of show you more of what happens with that. But he's able to use it instead of writing up a bunch of papers. When it's handwritten stuff and you give it to the various subs out there, they kind of, they, there's no accountability. It's like, Jeff, I know you'll send your slump guy after and take care of the stuff that I don't want to do for you. Well, when he's got a computer written list that he can also send to the guy's manager, all of a sudden it really changes for this mobile professional to take what he knows and boom, make data out of it. And I look at each one of those little remarks and say, you know, ultimately they're just tickets. There's a huge amount of tickets process by voice. So, the, um, what's interesting is you, as you work with this space is I started with um, let me come up to here. I started with doctors, because they're the ones who do transcription, right? They, they write up your notes, you visit, and they have this giant thing. So I was thinking, you know, let's fill in forms by voice. And these are Mongo forms that are really long. That's, you, you might have a document. What is a form? A form is something with a bunch of attributes, fill it in, and you're done. But a form is also something like, um, you know, a little phone message. Or even a form is what Tim was dictating. Uh, there's a little more detail I'm going to show you in a minute, but in terms of this medical thing, another guy looked at it and said, instead of a big giant report, every one of those things is like a symptom. And I want to break them up and I'll manage the presentation, right? Sounds like a familiar theory. And when we did that, I was luckily ready when some builders came along and said, we're trying to make Dragon work, but Dragon does not recognize. When we talk, it has a lot of trouble really isolating and nailing that you did a command followed by data, followed by a command to send some data. This is just like a computer program. You get your program, you get your command, and you get your arguments. And you're supposed to do it right. If you don't do it right, it doesn't run. Well, that's what kind of happens when you're out in the field talking and hoping that your audio gets processed right by the speech recognition engine. Well, because we've been kind of changing around how we thought of medical, we said, well, we can take a bunch of individual things and rearrange them, but well, what is a builder? 
The builder's a guy walking around to houses instead of you know making house calls like a doctor to different people. And as he goes into a house, the house has different symptoms that different specialists can take care of. So we were able to lift that model and kind of use it in the builder world. Um, so that was interesting. Uh, they have some needs. I'll show some other builders um, said, well, that's all very nice, but at the end of the day, our massive problem is we build these giant projects, and then we have to walk through and clean up everything before we hand it to the ultimate consumer. And there's maybe a lot of issues. Right now, we have this sort of manual way of feeding Prologue. Prologue is the application that is, uh, pop is one application popular with big builders to track issues. Um, it does a lot of things, one of which is to track issues. So, we adapted something, we really streamlined this symptom idea for punching out a building. Some other people in the world of safety. I mean, if you're building a big building, there's safety issues happening. You've got to stay on top of it. You've got to be out in the field. You've got to get them written up. You've got to track it. You need accountability. They're able to adapt um, this stuff. Even branching into private investigators. Um, early, at one point, somebody said, yeah, I, I hate reports. This is, you know, Suppose you got a murder investigation, and you come in and they let you describe 200 pieces of evidence. I mean, there they are all, all around the floor. Ugh. But if we can just talk it in, boom, 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 then they get done with the job. Right? That's an interesting idea. I haven't really gone into that as much as another flavor of um, PI in which, uh, you know, the fact is, if you get hit by somebody, you want their insurance to pay for your problems. Well, their insurance company doesn't want to pay you if you really don't have problems, so they'll send an investigator out to you know, see if you really have problems. And so there the guy is out in the field, he's got his notes, and again, you have this issue of all this data is accumulating in the field. We want to suck the brains out of the field guys, put them in a computer program so that we can all manage it. So adapting this data collection for purposes of private eye is another use that's come along. I think teachers, you know, you've got a bunch of different Students and papers, you got a principal maybe walking around, all kinds of issues. They might want the accountability of having da, 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 da. And if you had a smart way of collecting that information and letting them manage it, you'd really be solving a need. Um, so, let's see if this works. The, uh, as the data comes along, As I originally started writing the thing, I was thinking, okay, we're back to our doctor doing a soap note. He's doing a soap note, and this is what a soap note looks like. Well, then you get to, oh, but that's not the only kind of form that he fills in. He might want to dictate a letter. He might want to dictate um, a comprehensive report. And he might be interleaving various things within his text uh, for different people. So you start to have aspects of this problem, of this issue of, of dictation growth. <coughs> Well, that's all right, because at the end of the day, if at 12 o'clock I start talking, and I have this, and I have that, and the other thing, if we can set up a textual record, and the guy says enough hooks to say, well, here comes a soap note, here comes a soap note, here comes a letter, I can, through another process, sort these blobs out and send all the soap information to be processed by the soap rules. Soap rules. And the letter stuff to be processed by some letter rules and make the appropriate documentation. Um, Uh, builder. I'll see. This is some. Um, I'm break down this. Uh, oh, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm going to go to. If I've got a builder like uh, Manny Gonzalez, he's out. Um, dictating in the field. I won't. Yeah. Let me uh, bring up the one. So you've got someone out there. Russian 1176, Mark with you. Vendor Isaac. We cut the hole for the, for the water line. William lift up the water line. We're going to call concrete for Tuesday and call for water heater to be installed. Joe, 799. 
renderize it with the leak on the roof. So this is what the guy can do. We can simplify it just describing what's happening. If he tells us where something is, if he tells us either the specific name of a vendor or a descriptor, and we can then reach back and match that up with, well, who at address 799, you know, there's a whole label for what 799 really means. We can, we know who all the vendors are, so if we just parse out the initial portion and say that's vendor and everything else is text, we've got a way of picking apart the text that speech recognition wrote down for you. So the guy in the field, you know, if one of these screws up, we can, just like in a computer program, if it doesn't compile, you go fix the bug, oh, and then it runs. So we can look at what he said and then run through and use all our rules rather than being faced with speech recognition, having this train wreck. Because once speech messes up a command and it thinks you're still talking to this command, but you did a new command, but it's that day, it just doesn't work. So you have the idea of, um, of accents. You have the idea that down here, these freshen remarks, um, where's one? Uh, you also want to be able to, um, here we go, vendor bar call installation. I want to be able to go back, I mean, it's one thing to say here's all the problems, and it's another to go out and manage them. So if we can take the data, rearrange it for somebody, send them out into the field with something simple, you know, here's all your addresses. Um, here is, uh, here's the issue, and if he just has to use this one number, because he's already said where he is, so I know there's a batch of numbers at that address, if he just says, refresh 1177, bar, call the installation inspection, well, we already know what it was, we just tack this new information on, send it back. It's this ability to hold the vendors accountable, update easily by voice through tools that they know, I mean, they know spreadsheets, so that's pretty easy to manage. Um, <coughs> that uh, makes it usable. Um, just besides accent, you have uh, issues of. JT Jacobs, Area 1, Corbin Associates, Area 2, Interiors. Area 3 is Corridor 393. Begin dictation for North Wall. In general, ensure that river base is fully adhered to wall. Remove any unscheduled paint markings, dirty debris from river base. Remove any unscheduled paint markings, dirty debris from wall. Now, in this case, you have somebody where the people who know how it's supposed to work, they know. But then, this is the one with a bunch of closeout issues. They have architects, they have owners, they have their own construction superintendents walking around, and they may not know which vendor is specifically responsible. So you adapt. You say, okay, in your case, we'll customize. Don't even say who the vendor is. If you'll just say what the issues are, somebody who's smart who receives this stuff will fill that in later. Right? Again, in the world of speech recognition, it's trying to do command data, command. I, I don't have this staging ability, but later on, they'll receive this file. They'll turn it into um, a little spreadsheet that they themselves can go and fill in who the vendors are. Come on, be responsive. Yeah, there we go. JTK. Um, so this spreadsheet has taken all that data that he dictated through the powers, uh, changed the room numbers into the label that they like. Um, there's their issue. They've put in their special acronym they have for each vendor, and now this is perfectly framed to be given over to Prolog, because Prolog knows how to read you know, XLS or CSV files to be fed the data, and it's way easier than the normal manual way of entry. All right, so enough of that. I won't uh, go through these other ones. Um, so now, some ideas about the, the business. Um, you see all the technology, I think it's going to work. Everybody should use it. Uh, some assumptions. People will put up with issues as you develop. Hmm. Uh, manage it. 
I really believe in it. I'll do the right thing. I promise to myself. I really will. Hmm. Is that always a really good assumption? As a small company, as I told you when I left IBM, I was doing uh, speech recognition. I was teaching classes to, I was really subsidizing the business. I was doing this other thing called facilitation that I won't get into. But there you are, stupid me, splitting my time three ways against companies that are doing whatever the issue was full time with lots of people. Well, <laughs> that's not a fair fight. I, I, you, need, you can't do it all, you have to focus. Um, and there I was developing, well, I know how to do this. I can go find spreadsheet, write Excel and parse Excel. I can work with that. My data is working. I have a couple of users. You know, yeah, I, I, I've got it kind of managed. I could use a database if I need to, but, well, I don't know databases yet. And uh, I got this development. I've got to do it. I don't have time to you know, learn that other stuff. So I'm assuming that my whole sort of text file and spreadsheet way of doing things is going to work. Um, some other assumptions that are back there, uh, the kind of more present, um, there's this thing, you know, if you don't like what you're doing, this is wrong. Yeah, that's good, but the reality is there's a lot of people that we all have to appreciate. Yeah, maybe they could be doing something else, but they're doing what they do, and a lot of really crummy jobs that at this point in their life, 40, 50, 60, they're kind of stuck. How can you really do anything else? It's, it's not a given that everybody in life can find stuff they like to do as opposed to doing whatever they have to do for eight hours a day or 10 or 12 or whatever it is. Um, back to this database issue, um, what I wasn't perceiving was, uh, you know, you think you have all these skills, you work for IBM, you did sysadmin stuff. Uh, that's all well and good, but they need skills that will match what they, they're doing. And for them to pay big bucks to somebody, you know, there's not just a small shop paying a great expert a lot to stay on. They don't have enough work. If you want to pay somebody big bucks, you better have a lot of work to leverage those big bucks out over. A lot of work means learn databases. Well, I'm sitting here isolated thinking I'm fine with my, you know, it's kind of like the Lord of the Rings, and I'm, I'm a little hobbit taking care of my stuff in the Shire. I'm not really aware of the big world. I'm surviving. Who needs that other stuff? Um, so, why did I start doing this? I mean, until the builders came along, it was like, well, I, I really you know, should do something else. But then these, this one guy said, you know, write up the application this way. I, I, I have to go and, and do this. He, Go do a presentation at the trade show in Las Vegas, man. They'll be all over. Okay, and I kind of did something, but he wasn't—he was retiring, so he wasn't using. But this other guy found me, and described kind of the same issue, and what was needed. And where he came out of the blue—that's a fundamental thing. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of houses. There's got to be something here, and that energized me again. You know, I didn't have marketing people and all the studies and all the everything to say is this right or not. It just felt like. Um, there had to be other people who wanted to do this um, this uh, voice thing. So you have this idea, and um, uh, <laughs> maybe you all have been approached every once in a while. This is a uh, thread in um, slash dot uh, recently, fairly recently, describing how these oddball ideas come up to programmers. Oh, you know, I just need a programmer. You would do this, and they haven't really thought it through, and they but they're convinced that a programmer could, could solve all their issues. And um, in, in my world, I feel, well, yeah, I may believe in it, but nobody's going to take me seriously. So that's, again, feeding my feel of, I'm just going to have to do it myself, because nobody else believes. I, I believe. It was an interesting line in here. A great idea that is hacked together with shell script and kilometers of spaghetti code can make someone a fortune and, lame as it sounds, change the world. You know, that feels like, well, it's kind of, I like what I've done, it works, but um, it, you know, it's been a great prototype. It was another step. Uh, he comments, well, yeah, not quite. Great idea. You put it together, it will almost certainly be borrowed and better implemented by someone else, uh, making them a fortune. The world still gets changed, I suppose. And this is... Yes? five minutes in the locker room. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, 
it's a uh, uh, precursor to, um, you know, why are you so alone? Why are you doing this on your own? Why not open source it? And it's this feel, well, you know, remember, I, I want to give the Pearl Foundation hundreds of thousands of dollars is the, you know, something I can easily put off because that's what really made it Pearl. It, it can happen. And if you open source it, well, can open source really develop an application as much as it's really good at, say, some of the infrastructure work, um, application. And G, as long as I can sort of nurture it along and get it to the point where I really know the application space, um, you know, I have a shot at also being a player because if I hand it over, it's going to run away from me. And so it's this sort of self-centered thing that's, yeah, it has a shot, but who knows? It's, it's just one of the decisions. Um, reality. Very important questions as you go into business. Is it real? Is it worth it? Can we win? Those are the, the, the most bottom line ways you can think of going into new business. You know, I'm talking to Dave at, um, I think it was Houston or Chicago, uh, just describing in general the ideas of things. And he's saying, well, yeah, you may have something of a prototype, but that's not enough. If you want to talk to and get anywhere, get the money. Have the business plan, have your spec. That's when a programmer can really risk spending some time helping on something. Because until that point, it really hasn't um, crossed the, uh, the hurdles. Uh, what are the threats to the thing? Speech recognition that actually did understand commands. Great competitors. There's one called NoteVault.com. Um, Pearl 6 grammars. Man, those things might come along and be fabulous at parsing and, and really flexible. Um, it's also an opportunity. Hey, let's use Pearl 6 and really have a great engine. Because what I'm... And mobile platforms, will they blow you away? Well, yes and no. They're also enablers uh, to get people easy access to their data, do what they need. Um, so... Uh, Parser as differentiator for transcription service. It, it winds up, the opportunity is you have good old medical transcription. The transcription is a business itself. The guy in the video, he was using Dragon, and that's the hope. People can use Dragon. If they had this text, what do you do with it next? Oh, let's go to the website, push the file through, it turns it into the data, sends it out, manages it, gives us the ongoing stuff. That'd be great. And that's where I see the teacher. If I, as a teacher, could use $50 Dragon to write down what I said, push it into a site and manage it, that might be useful. I don't know. But some kind of an engine. The people who will pay for transcription, that's, you, you've got between blending transcription and your cool tool that parses and manages, that's where I see some opportunity. Um, a better front end, like going to Yahoo's UI. They have a data table thing, which is kind of like a spreadsheet, but a really nice interface through the um, web. Amazon, Mechanical Turk. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you know the whole idea of splitting up the audio into maybe 20 and 30 second bytes. Have the same audio done by several people, diff them, figure out what was said. Ah, that's how we can handle transcription for a decent price. Uh, Um, I'll just say, you know, there are various decisions that face you as you go along. Um, there's a thing called personal MBA, my nice set of books that are good advice. Um, getting things done, another book in that series actually. Um, pricing, how do you price this stuff? I started thinking, well, I'll just sell a cheap little thing to lots of people. Um, but builders have the money and it takes more time, so you wind up going high. But you hear me saying, uh, that's not working. Let's go back to the web and have a web interface that um, really lets you reach the whole world. Because the whole world builds stuff. Maybe we stopped in this country. But there's a lot of construction out there that if we just had it right, they could come and you didn't have to charge much. And you, um, uh, IP, the whole thing of, you know, if you develop it, is somebody still going to come along and, and say, oh, but we did it first, and you're screwed. Um, some wonderful things. I can have, uh, I guess, two more minutes. Where the, what were the highs? The highs were finally figuring out enough of what mattered in this book to make a document be programmed through Word, you know, using Win32, OLA, and that, to finally get Word to make a document. Um, 
developing a configuration system. Yeah, there's some other ones, but and I'd show you what was here, but getting TK to work. I haven't shown you the application itself, have I? Oh well. Um, dedicated users, that's always wonderful. Um, being able to distribute a Perl EXE, pull it all together and have something that actually works for us, somebody all in one executable. Um, Uh, intellectual property, um, find that, wait a minute, ASR isn't as wonderful as it is, it's, it's just another thing for people to learn, it makes it difficult. You know, in another YAPSI, the Google guys were saying, simplify it, you gotta simplify it. And ASR was just too much for some people. Um, and the desktop solution, again, we need to go to the web. So finally, uh, okay, so let me go back to here. Um, what are the issues? Well, at this point, money, <laughs> monitors, various little tools that would help. Um, being smarter about um, how do you make the web interface work? Well, go read about it. Well, I'm working on that, but it's just one of those issues. Could there be an easier web way, you know, if you're starting from scratch? Um, secure web, you feel all the time, man, the web is not secure. People just pound away. Well, then I won't put stuff up. Well, how do you get in there? Uh, Data management, we talked about that issue. And then finally, um, you know, dealing with CPAN, when, when modules do have problems and, you know, can you get a response and figuring out, well, I guess I'll do it myself and reach around the code. For someone who's just starting, it's not the Wizard of Pearl, that can be an issue. Of course, knowing what, um, what CPANs might be even better is, uh, um, something. And then finally, another avenue of support are the guys in you know, Pro Training Australia. They put some of their manuals and books together online. Maybe not all the exercise, but you can learn a lot. Help is there, just got to do it. So, there's a run through, a little experience of building an application. I would take the time, but we're done, to actually show the actual application at work. Doesn't take much, but I'm over my limit. So, thank you very much. It's lunchtime, right? No. Yeah. 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 Yeah.